Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts and Cross Nation, and today I want to go over. I've been wanting to do this video for quite uh, a long time now already. It's already it's already fairly like late, but uh, better late than never. Um, but essentially, what I'm covering today's video is essentially the uh, Ask Me Anything or AMA as, it, as it's known to on Reddit that Rachel and Glacy hosted uh, about a two, three weeks ago or whatnot. Um, again, it's fairly late. I wanted to cover this earlier, but like I have, I have a lot of things I'm trying to like take care of as well <laughs> in my private life. So yeah, but at the very least I'm trying to get out now. Um, so essentially their post that they had on Reddit was titled, uh, employees Glacy and Rachel are here. Ask them anything. Uh, it says, hello all. I'm happy to say that we're finally having an M AMA with the, with them and whatnot. How does it work? Have a question you want to ask, whether it's about Union Cross or what their favorite pizza toppings are. Glacy and Rachel will try their best to answer as many questions as they can. Just ping the name of the person you want to ask a question to and type out your question. The post had up to 14 days worth of time to ask a question. It can only ask up to three questions. And the type of questions you can ask, you could ask about anything uh, except anything that breaks any of the subreddit rules. So I took the time to actually look through all of the comments uh, look through all the comments of questions that they actually responded to and I'm gonna be covering in today's video all of the ones that I feel are worth pointing out and talking about basically all right so the first question that we're gonna cover today goes by the reddit user and Apple uh, and they ask towards Glacy will there ever be an expanded use for money Currently, it's basically useless once you've played the game for a few weeks since you have so much of it. Even something like a one, two, three star metal shop involving money would be would make it useful. And Glacy replied, I like this idea. Okay. Now, uh, it's actually interesting that this person posted this because in their dev uh, suggestion Reddit post that they had uh, before the Dandelion meeting, that was actually supposed to be like a bunch of questions they could tell like ask and like refer like suggest to the devs and whatnot before the dandelion mean i has suggested a money shop as well primarily because of what they said in here like money's practically useless in the game right now <laughs> like 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 even like i just started an alternate account right now too where i basically i'm gonna be free to play on my alternate account and like i still have no problem with money like i don't like it's it's just so hard to like to like end up actually struggling with it like it, it it feels like it's just like a mechanic in the game that's not really putting in any type of worth that you would think it would be okay and one solution that i had um before i started seeing anybody else suggest this was a money shop okay um and it would be nice if like you can in the money shop you can use it to buy a bunch of like common uh, materials or even like skills because honestly skills are probably one of the one of the things in the game that we tend to lack the most uh i don't know why and then if they really wanted to they could even put in some of the more sought after type stuff like maybe like brooms for like really high prices for money so like imagine like one broom costing two million money whatever okay just some high amount like to mix it so like you can't just like binge on it. They could be very creative with it. So I think a money shop would be really cool. And it goes along with like the whole Kingdom Hearts, you know, uh, franchise as well. Because you see money shops in almost every single, you see a Moogle shop in almost every single Kingdom Hearts game. So, or even if they don't do a Moogle shop, they could have a Huey, Dewey, Louie shop where you can spend money to buy stuff too. That would be cool too. I honestly wouldn't mind that. It would still go along with the franchise because there's basically Huey, Dewey shops in like, uh, the major titles anyways too so they could go either wow I don't care like but I think it would be a nice thing to add to the game all right so the second question we're gonna ask is uh, goes by the reddit user Tomo uh, and they asked will the bonus jewels campaign ever be modified as it stands paying for the highest available pack of jewels doesn't give you enough for a 10 metal pool let alone a 5 metal pool it would be nice if the bonus jewels campaign Skill better like the weekly deal that gives you around 40% more jewels. Glacier responds, interesting, we can ask about suggestions like that, okay? I personally think this should also be modified because realistically, the highest amount that you could pay in the jewel shop, so like if you were to go and purchase jewels with real money, 
is for the uh, $100 option, at least it's $100 here in the US, where you get like 14,700 jewels, which is not even enough for like that fifth pull, which to me is absolutely like ludicrous in my opinion. Like the shop in general is just expensive. And I think a, mo a majority of the player base basically agrees that almost the entire shop, the, the pricing in the game is just ridiculous. It's just completely ridiculous. Like in my opinion, almost everything should be like halved. <laughs> because <laughs> like it's just it's just ridiculous but uh i mean that's just me but i do agree that like the amount of jewels that are in these like bonus jewels campaign are like not enough to incentivize me to really get uh to like take advantage of them whatsoever like the the 100 option they only give you an extra 1300 uh jewels during the bonus jewels campaign for the 100 option and like that's not a lot at all i get that amount just for my weekly logins and missions and whatnot i get that amount in from my vip deals all the time i mean this week we got extra 1400 jewels like to me like extra 1400 jewels for a hundred bucks when i can get that for 15 during the vip deal like th that doesn't make any sense to me <laughs> whatsoever like if i'm paying a hundred bucks i want at least like one or two uh pulls worth of extra jewels minimum Okay, I mean, that's me though. I would love to hear what your guys' thoughts are about that. I know like this is kind of like one of those like little controversial topics because it's like we all kind of know that S Square Enix is never going to really change their pricings for their jewels, unfortunately. Uh, but at the same time, it's something that kind of like everybody wants because it's, it, it, it's, it's kind of, it's really pricey. All right, so the next question goes by the Reddit user Jephistophels. Stopheles? I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that. Um, they asked it towards both Glacy and Rachel, and they asked, How much anatomy does the NA division have on what gets released to the global version of the game? Are your feedback reports going to a North America version or to the devs in Japan? Um, by North America, they mean, I'm pretty sure they mean global. Um, when you guys submit player feedback, do you get any response from the devs regarding it? For example, if people were asking for parody with Japan on Fantasia and Mika B, do they say, we can't do that because blah blah blah, or is it simply a one-way communication? Glacier responds, feedback reports are sent to the, devs, to the devs in Japan. It's not one-way communication, and normally we get feedback regarding our submissions. Um, it's I, I, I find this question interesting and i'm glad they actually addressed it because honestly it feels like a lot of the times at least towards the player base and like the way i see it too it feels like a lot of times a lot of things aren't really i don't know tested for global anyways so like I i'm always severely questioning like what goes on with the devs <laughs> a lot of times i know glacy and rachel and everyone else like in, in their position are just kind of more of like the mouthpiece and whatnot they just they're they're, they're, they're the they're the mediators the uh between us and the devs and whatnot so like they don't really have much control over what appears in the game it's just more like they can just say like hey this uh people are interested in this can you make that happen type of thing but they can't actually like force anything um so it's nice to see that like Glacy and the do get feedback. Uh, it would be nice if maybe we could also get some of that feedback once in a while, depending on the topic. Uh, but that's, yeah, that's just one of those things. I know Square Enix is not really big on open communication, which uh, ironically is kind of one of the most controversial and hottest topics at the moment that's kind of like we're, we're constantly griping them about uh i know i've started it but i started seeing other people too kind of like griping at them about the fact that like they pretty much only use reddit when they can easily answer questions on twitter too for simple stuff and i started noticing i started doing that the last day or two too so i i'm i'm very happy about that if they happen to be watching this video i'm glad you started answering like simple questions about that too on 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 twitter um it's a step in the right direction and like it's more of what like is supposed to be happening anyways all right so the next question goes by the reddit user uh skitty scat 1971 it goes for both Glacy and rachel and they ask any news about getting an illustrated Kyrie ex vip some of us can't complete any of the new content because it is so extremely difficult without a Kyrie ex or shioni ex jp did get a Kyrie ex vip and it's seriously unfair I can't speak for everyone, but I have never have enough jewels to do more than a handful of pulls on the Kyrie EX banners that have come out in the past. I'd really appreciate any info you can give us, please and thank you. Rachel replies, We can certainly forward your feedback to the devs about offering these medals through VIP quests. We might have something nice upcoming though that could help with your problem. Um, this, of course, ended up being referring to the uh, Kyrie and Shino. You know, Shion, uh, five pull mercy pull banners that we just got recently for, you know, anniversary. 
but this person is basically saying like like I want to help guarantee a way to get at least a copy of the metal even if it's like no dotted like just getting a copy of the metal is what matters because this person is saying like it sounds like this person never really has more than like three to nine k jewels at a time because of the fact they tend to release all this other stuff first and then they go like oh hey surprise we got a new Kyrie and Shion EX banner coming out for all of you that just wasted your jewels whoops <laughs> That's basically what happens like almost all the time. I, I do think having a VIP deal for Kyrie Shoni X would be fantastic. Even if it's like a one time thing because uh, I wouldn't doubt it that even like some free to play players might do it just the one time just because of the fact that it's the chances of trying to pull from it from the top drawer deal all the time when you're trying to pull from other banners too can get aggravating. I, I, I can definitely see uh, like that type of frustration happening for quite a lot of players so i don't know that one's kind of iffy all right so this one is a bit long but this next question goes to the reddit user keyseeker13 they asked to rachel what do you do for union cross exactly i haven't been able to watch the union cross live streams much and i haven't seen you around on reddit so i'm not sure what you do rachel does pop up every once in a while on the live streams but she doesn't really make much of an appearance on social media so it's like one of those things that so it's like one of those things of like whether or not like is she also representative like rachel that we can actually go to on a regular basis or is she like just kind of floating around it's it's one of those things that's like if they can just straight up tell us like who's our representative more than rather than like assuming who our representative is and whatnot like right now technically we're like assuming Lacey is a representative, but like I don't, I don't think everyone's ever actually said like, "Hey, I'm your official representative" type of person, like type of thing, like no official announcement type thing. All right. Any other question that they ask for both Lacey and Rachel uh, is asking, "What is the process that you use to inform the higher ups at Senna about what the Union Cross community is saying?" In other words, when you see specific concerns from the community that you want to inform Senna of, what is the process you use to do that? Lacey ends up replying uh answering for the second part about like the information process for Santa and whatnot normally i go through notifications through twitter and reddit for anything uh quote unquote trending if i notice something that have more than a few people posting about it i add it to a report then rachel translates and talks to the higher ups it's a little different each time bug report uh bug reports get highest priority then community feedback on new or older features suggestions are added alongside feedback so they aren't looked over we also do have to pick and choose some things that are added if we throw everything at once and won't get anywhere so we prioritize things that the community wants most and then back it up basically what she's saying right here is that uh essentially if she sees if she sees a bunch of people talking about the same thing uh that will get the highest priority among stuff that they that they tell senna first um before some of the, like the more minor issues okay um, so what does that mean for us? What that means for us is that if you guys remember back like a few months ago or whatnot, I was like on a month long spree talking about uh, basically advocating towards releasing their, their in-game drop rates and even uh, uh, the Bruce Banner guy that's on uh, Twitter, uh, he was on a spree as well going about uh, needing more copy metal banners and whatnot. Okay, and I believe it's because of the fact that we were doing stuff like this and that we had people following us and like uh, supporting us the whole time, it, I wouldn't doubt that because of this, Glacy and possibly Rachel um, made this part of like a more uh, important topic to bring to Santa and whatnot to help make it happen. So in case we ever have um, something we really want in the future if we all get together and kind of like continuously spam them about it and whatnot chances are we can have a good chance of having it appear in the game at like in some way shape or form so this is actually a pretty uh notable piece of information that's worth note noting um rachel ends up replying as well saying that i've been a little bit behind and joining on in on the social aspects of union cross so hopefully i'll take a more active role in interacting with all you guys in the future for what I do, it's a mix of stuff. I translate community reports and deliver them to the devs. If a news tweet goes out, there's a fair chance I wrote it. I also work on the in-game notices and banners. Um, and Keith Secret ends up asking, can you elaborate a little bit? Like, so like, how exactly do you work with the banners? Like, do you 
work on the art or determine which metals go in them and what blah 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 also by translating do you mean translating them into the developer's language or translating them into a format that's easier for them to understand not sure whether this counts as a third question or just an extension of the first one rachel replies sure i make the most of the physical banners that you guys uh, see in game unfortunately i don't have any say in the context of the deal so she can't actually like say what choose what medals are in the deals and by translating i mean translating english player feedback into japanese so she's literally a uh language translator to the devs because realistically all of the devs everything that happens for us in global comes from japan all right like even though we have a Square Enix North America or global, you know, division, they don't actually create any of the content for us for global. Uh, all of it comes from the Japanese version of the game. All right. So the next question that uh, we're gonna cover is by the Reddit user Denku331, and is geared both towards Glacy and Rachel. Uh, they asked, "Are there any plans to en enhance Union Cross party management or party functionality in general?" It's difficult to incentivize my party to participate at all at the moment as the only thing I can do is threaten to remove people. A way to reward them would be nice. Today's update is the first in a while to offer a moon gem. Are there any future plans to increase the rate of moon gem availability? Similarly, will all future possibilities to acquire moon gems be as difficult as the current one? Even if these are questions you can't or won't answer, I would still like to thank you for being able to participate in this blah blah blah. And you know just format formalities rachel replies that's a really good question in terms of party management we don't have any concrete answers currently but it's definitely something we can bring up to the devs to consider as for the moon gems we, we forwarded player concerns that they aren't attainable often enough we've got something coming soon ish that should hopefully help a little bit with this okay so of course she's referring to uh the free moon gem that we got in the coliseum i believe when you reach like tier 15 or something tier 15 or 16 one of the two um, as well as we got the avatar boards for the moon gems, um, as well as we had a moon gem challenge as well. Uh, all of those helped out. Of course, the moon gem challenge was really difficult. I know a lot of people kind of like were uh, complaining a lot about that. <laughs> about like, oh, hey, we finally get moon gems after a long time. And the event that ended up happening ends up being like one of the hardest events ever that only select player like portion of the player base could actually do. Like that was a little messed up in my opinion. Um, too so yeah it's one of those things but at the very least moon jams are starting to make more of a common return uh, which is a good thing but I, I also agree in terms of the party management because realistically uh, e even as a party leader myself I don't always ha like having to like only uh, like basically kick people um, I do enjoy ways to like incentivize my party members uh, one of the things that I personally do for my party members is like, like for example, for this last uh, uh, union war that we just had where we tried getting the union armor and whatnot, I basically offered that the person who gets the most lux in my party, I will basically I will pay for their free VIP next week. Um, so that was like some incentive that I was doing for as party leader for my party. Um, and that definitely got a lot of people hyped up. <laughs> I mean, because who can't say, who says no to free VIP if you're like number one? uh luxor during your party whatnot like like it's those type of things that i try to do as a party leader uh but it would be nice if uh there could be some type of in-game incentive too that i could like reward to my players that would be nice as well i also do think that they should change slightly change the way they do things for union cross 2 the actual like union cross mode in the game uh, where they should make it that you could actually play with anybody within your union and not just your party. I feel like that's a very heavy restriction and I don't really like that to be honest. Uh, like, I, I feel like they should fix that as well. They should remove the timer that's ha that's in there in terms of like waiting for like party members to like, um, or players to come in before you like go in. Like, I, I don't understand what the timer is there for but like these are minor things well somewhat minor things but these are things that i would also like to see change um especially with pvp coming out uh within the next couple weeks or so because the fact they did announce for pvp that you can challenge anybody in the game so like even level uh, even like the rank 9000th like player in the game could challenge the number one player if they really wanted to because the fact that pvp is doing that it would be really nice if they could like improve the way union cross is also interacts uh with multiplier type uh, multiplayer aspects all right so the next question goes by the reddit user oblivion239 and they asked towards glacy okay so they add their three questions were uh their first question global recently got the flash metal into the game are there plans to keep releasing all of the skipped metals we never got 
Uh, number two, well, with all the available avatar boards that JP got that got, was skipped over here, will they be introduced as level up rewards when the cap is raised? And three, will Global ever get VIP coins slash boards? Glacier responds, depends on the medals, but for the most part, they are aware of which ones are still needed in Global. Same with avatar boards, VIP coins, or something else altogether. I found this to be a very interesting question. Uh, because of the fact that a lot of players do complain about VIP coins because of the fact of how, like I said before, already view the, uh, the store in the game to be like ridiculously expensive, uh, VIP coins would just be another way to help make it, I don't know, feel a little bit more worth it towards the money spent on the game for those of you that do spend money on the game. Um, even if you're just a VIP player, VIP coins will help make it feel as if the 15 bucks worth for VIP is actually worth 15 bucks personally for me i feel like vip is more worth like you know like a, anywhere from a seven to nine dollar range i don't i personally don't feel like it's worth 15 bucks part of this has already been addressed like because as we saw with the key art 16 banner um they did give us pretty much almost almost all of the medals that we were behind in for jp we're pretty much now caught up on we're only behind on like two three uh, major, major medals at this point uh in time all right, so this next question I find to be kind of important. Uh, it goes by the Reddit user Haxel Hemura, and they ask, Thanks for doing this. I have a question about the new trait medals. Was it ever considered to do just a generic trait medal that works for all medals instead of one trait medal works for only one medal? I mean, if money is a factor in this, which it definitely is, there would be another great way to have people buy jewels by making it something you can purchase. Glacier responds, this could be a step in the direction for having them, but it's something that needs to be discussed further. We'll let them know about the community interest of them. <sighs> If you guys have seen my videos <laughs> in my channel, you already know that I heavily dislike the trait medals as they are right now. Um, at least in the way that like Senna is approaching them and like advertising and whatnot, I don't like them whatsoever. Uh, primarily because of the fact that the main thing that I, f at least I, how I see it, a majority of the community were looking in terms of a trait medal was more of a generic trait medal, uh, and primarily because of the fact that one of the major reasons that at at least I wanted trait medals in the game, a generic trait medal, was to allow to be able to have a way to provide uh, reroll traits on uh, medals that we can no longer get traits on. So, for example, old high score challenge medals, uh, even past VIP medals, uh, even special event medals like in that instance so like if you have a scrooge mcduck right now for example you can't get any more scrooge scrooge mcduck so you can't like roll traits for him like it would be nice if you could have some form of a generic trait medal so you can you know at least try and roll traits for your scrooge mcduck even if they end up being crap just having that chance there uh is very valuable to a lot of players um, and honestly, that's more of like what I was expecting. So when they came out with these new like EX exclusive like trait medals, like I was I was severely disappointed. Um, so I would love that they incorporated some type of generic trait medal. Like honestly, I was expecting generic trait medals to be pretty much handled in the same way that Mickeys and Brooms are. So when they didn't do that, I was I was severely baffled and confused. I'm like, what what are you guys doing? Like. <laughs> it would have been so easy for you guys to to like incorporate but like you guys i don't know it... anyways moving on all right so the next question goes by the reddit user okay guys so that was it for all of the questions that i felt that were still relevant uh in the ama that they had it on reddit um i would love to hear what you guys have uh what your thoughts about it are on in the comment section down below um but other than that uh that was all that i really wanted to cover for this uh, video but if you enjoyed the video please leave a like and subscribe and hit that bell button it's the best way to know when I upload new videos like this one um, and but other than that my name is Brian from Kingdom Martin Cross Nation and I will see you guys in the next video peace